I am Tim. Welcome to Watch You Want, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're looking at the Rolex Cosmograph Daytona Reference 116523, 40 millimeters in a combination of stainless steel and 18 karat yellow gold. You can see, and if you like, you can buy this Rolex Cosmograph Daytona on our website, WatchYouWant.com. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Watch You Want Inc. Now what you can see here is that on my wrist, 6 and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, the Daytona is easily the best fit among the 40 millimeter Rolex options for a smaller wrist. Now it has the same look as every automatic winding cosmograph since the 1988 advent of the autos, but what it has that the modern oysters like the GMT Master II, the Submariner, really all of the super case watches don't have is a wonderfully low profile and compact lugs. That's right, 40 millimeters, it's a small, compact 40. Wears big because of its basically unmistakable style. Everyone knows this is a Daytona. And the visual punch of that yellow gold accenting, but because the lugs are wonderfully delicate, pared down and flow seamlessly from case into the tapered bracelet, there's an elegance here and an easy fit that makes it the best option among traditional sporting 40, fil 40 millimeter Rolexes for a smaller wrist. Now you can see that the flexibility of the bracelet is outstanding and because of the design of the lugs with the conforming solid end link pieces, there's a, a tremendous amount of liberation from the end links to the bracelet itself. So you can pull it down tight. You can even bow it inwards if you want. This can wear on as small a wrist as you like. I know many wrists substantially below six inches in circumference, even below 5.5, wear this watch with ease, comfort, and real style. So there's a versatility here that's assisted by the fact that each one of these links actually features individual curvature or camber. You can see it in the silhouetted profile here, but each one of these links actually has a little bit of an arc to it. So the compound effect when it starts to curve around the wrist is that it almost has pre-curve built into it. So it flows around in an arc in a way that simple straight links would not. And of course, all solid center links, solid end pieces, and the latest generation of milled out bank vault solid Rolex clasps. Now you can see, Everything here is finished to the highest standard. This isn't the old generation of stamped clasps. This one features Rolex's tool-free EasyLink 5mm incremental adjustment. Snaps and snicks just like the clasp itself. The idea is that a true sports watch, this can be worn on hot day, during activity when your wrist might be expanding, or in cold weather when your wrist might contract, and you can easily resize it on the fly like so. Now it closes, just like the EasyLink, with reassuring snap and a snick that speaks to the manufacturing tolerances. An excellent piece, and it is a true sports watch. 100 meter, 330 foot water resistant with trip lock crown. This is one that you can wear anywhere. The steel is versatile and durable. The gold makes it upscale with just enough accenting. Used with a judicious, deft hand, like jewelry, it accents and complements without dominating. It's not the whole ensemble. It's really the exclamation point that sets it apart. And you can see from every angle, you get a great synergy between the gold and the steel, never seeing an overwhelming mass of one, but always a great blend of the two. This is the ideal watch if you want a gold Rolex to wear all the time. Just enough Rolex gold, as well as the tough 904L Rolex steel. And the dial is a key to the success of this watch from a stylistic standpoint, because the beautiful gloss white in contrast against the black indices or the black indice hash marks of the Minitrack with the yellow gold accents, that red shock Daytona just above the sub register at six o'clock, and the thin, fine, low profile early hands gives this watch immense visual presence and elegance. I want to talk about those hands because. While they are thin and fine, they're part of a series of individual details that mark this as one of the earlier caliber 4130 or in-house Rolex movement Daytonas. Debuted in 2000, they represented a new generation of the total Rolex. Rolex dial, case, Rolex bracelet, clasp, and movement. This watch also features many of the hallmarks that mark it as an earlier example of that continuity. Now, this is a multi-million dollar industry that creates distinctions, some of them I'll admit kind of artificial, between different dial generations within 
reference generations of old 50s, 60s, and 70s Rolex models. Some of these dial variations are significant because they're genuinely rare. Some of them are useful because they can help you to date a watch and know more about when your watch was built and what series it belongs to. Although it's rarely used to date or identify modern references, and that's where I want to focus here because today tremendous variations exist within the contemporary circa 2000s and later Rolex references that can be used to help define how collectors are going to look at these watches in the future. Now this is an F-series watch, so roughly 2003 into early 2004, it's a watch that features the hallmarks of the earliest in-house Daytonas. And to demonstrate my point, I'm going to bring in a later one. What you're looking at here is an M-series, so roughly 2008, the dials changed hands, chapter rings, even the minute hashes, those little minute indices I mentioned, they actually changed from generation to generation. Now the easiest change to see, you can see good reflection of the thin and fine early or Mark I series hands on this F series that I have here. You can see how thin the hands are in relation to the actual hour indices themselves. Now you look at the M series in my right hand, you can see how fat and broad these hands are. It's definitely a different profile, it's a different component. They have different CNC data. If you were to reduce it to a computer numeric type of uh, figure, you would realize that edge to edge, these are far broader. Also changed, you can see on this watch, the hashes for 27 minutes and 33 minutes actually stand tall like the rest of them around the dial. Here in the much later M series, you can see that they're actually missing at 33 and 27. They were actually sort of pared down to little stubs to make more room. And the difference between them is striking in person. Now there have been at least six different generations of the six digit or in-house movement dial. This one is the earliest and one of the least common. And that's significant from a collector's perspective going forward. These are the distinctions that we're going to use to define the differences in modern Rolex once the 50s, 60s, and 70s watches have been eaten up by collectors and we start to look for the new classics and how we catalog them. All of these distinctions are important, but the most dramatic difference I'm saving for last, and that's the difference between the engraved chapter ring, that is the Rolex, 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 Rayhot of the inner bezel here, and the brushed chapter ring, which you can see is clean and spare on the earlier model in my left hand. These distinctions are very apparent in the hand. And now, because you know that this appeared roughly during the Z series, or approximately 2006 to 2007, you get a sense of when you should see this type of bezel, and you know that when you're looking at a spare, clean bezel like this, inner bezel, the Rayhot, which is brushed, signifies this as essentially a pre-Z series or early Z series watch. We know it's an F series, but these are the way we can break down the individual features and start to create distinctions as we understand how we're going to look at Rolex watches going into the future. Think of it as sort of an abbreviated spotter's guide. This watch really needs no spotter's guide to define its appeal. That's self-evident in my hand. But it is important to mention that in the early days of the in-house movements, there were some quirks, anomalies, and identifying features that are going to be important going forward. But the combination of the stainless steel, the yellow gold, the beautiful gloss white dial with its red and golden accents, as well as that 72-hour, three-day power reserve, free-sprung, breguet overcoil, column wheel, vertical clutch chronograph movement, explain the appeal of this watch more than any kind of minutia ever could. This is a watch that's a classic, that's instantly recognizable as a Daytona, that does have its defining features that can help you to date it, but the bottom line is these watches don't become dated, they are timeless. Mechanically robust and as I mentioned earlier, all Rolex inside and out. You can see this 116523 Rolex Cosmograph Daytona F-Series early model on our website, watchyouwant.com.